Good evening. Welcome to a special edition of Pray Vote Stand. I'm your host, Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council here in Washington, D.C. Monday night, shockwaves hit Washington, D.C. and reverberated across the nation when a leaked draft of a Supreme Court opinion overturning Roe v. Wade was published by Politico. Now, here are just two sentences from the nearly 100-page opinion written by Justice Samuel Alito that summarizes the extent of this opinion. Quote, we therefore hold that the Constitution does not confer a right to abortion. Roe and Casey must be overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion must be returned to the people and their elected representatives, end quote. Now, following the leak, the court, in a rare public statement from Chief Justice John Roberts, confirmed the authenticity of the leaked document, but emphasized that what leaked was only a draft and not the final decision of the court. Such a document leak is unprecedented in the court's modern history, and many here in Washington, D.C. speculate that it was orchestrated. The release was designed to intimidate and threaten the justices who were poised to send Roe v. Wade to the dustbin of history. Now, we pray this evening that those justices, if in fact this was orchestrated, will stand strong and not be intimidated. In the published draft decision, which was written back in February, Justice Alito offered what has been described as a full-throated, unflinching repudiation of the Roe v. Wade decision. Of course, that decision enshrined abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy, which most people don't realize. The 1973 court decision has led to an unprecedented loss of human life. In fact, in fact, estimates are as high as 60 million babies. 60 million, all killed before they could breathe their first breath. What a tragedy. As Justice Alito wrote in the leaked document, quote, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences, end quote. Now, knowing the decision to put the issue of abortion into the hands of the people after 50 years of the court presiding over the matter would be politically seismic, Justice Alito wrote the following, quote, we do not pretend to know how our political system or society will respond to today's decision overruling Roe and Casey. And even if we could foresee what would happen, he went on to write, we would have no authority to let that knowledge influence our decision, end quote. The Associated Press described the publishing of the leaked opinion being, quote, without an evident modern parallel, end quote. The publishing of the draft opinion prompted almost immediate demonstrations at the steps of the court. It has also elicited apoplectic responses from pro-abortion lawmakers like Senator Elizabeth Warren. I am angry, angry and upset, angry and upset and determined. The United States Congress can keep the Roe versus Wade, the law of the land. They just need to do it. And Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer railed against the opinion on the Senate floor. The Republican appointed justices reported votes to overturn Roe v. Wade will go down as an abomination. One of the worst, most damaging decisions in modern history. Mr. Schumer has pledged to hold a vote on doing legislatively what the court did nearly 50 years ago. Now that the court is poised to strike down Roe, it is my intention for the Senate to hold a vote on legislation to codify the right to an abortion in law. You know, this reveals several things. First, it reveals that Roe v. Wade was never a law. It was cer certainly an opinion of the court, but it was imposed upon the nation. But the responses also reveal very clearly that abortion is more than a political or a policy matter. Abortion is first and foremost a spiritual issue, one of great importance. And America stands at a critical juncture of choice. We have a very similar choice to that which Moses put before the children of Israel back in Deuteronomy 30 where he said this, quote, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, 
that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, he said, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, end quote. Our prayer that America will once again choose life and that it will start with our nation's highest court. Tonight, I will be joined by Senator Roger Marshall, who is one of our nation's leading pro-life legislators. And it's no wonder why. He has delivered more than 5,000 babies in his other career as a doctor. He'll join us with his reaction to the leaked Dobbs opinion and what this could mean for our nation moving forward. And Carrie Severino, a former Supreme Court clerk and current chief counsel and policy director at the Judicial Crisis Network, will join us to discuss not only what happens behind the scenes at the Supreme Court that could have led to such an unprecedented breach, but also what this potential ruling will mean in practice. Finally, as we can see, the day approaching that so many have prayed for and worked for, how should we call on the Lord in these final hours of waiting? FRC's National Prayer Director, Jay Johnston, will join us later with specific guidance for prayer as we await the final decision. But first, we begin tonight's program with prayer. Join me. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Most of all, we thank you for your mercy, that you have been merciful to America, bringing us to this point of what can only be described as repentance, as we turn away from what we as a nation embraced 50 years ago, maybe not by choice, but it was imposed upon us by the court, but we've lived with it. Abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy. Lord, forgive us, hear our cries, and Lord, I pray that you would bolster the men and women at the court who have made the right choice according to this draft opinion that we've seen. And may our nation go forward despite the opposition and the resistance to choosing life. May we not falter or fail again. Be with us tonight. Guide us in our conversation. Encourage our listeners and viewers, and may you be glorified, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first guest is uniquely positioned to offer both guidance and commentary as we all grapple with the news from the leaked Supreme Court majority opinion draft. Not only is he a senator with a record of one of our nation's strongest pro-life legislators, but he has also delivered more than 5,000 babies as a delivery room physician. Joining me now is our good friend, Kansas Senator Roger Marshall. Senator Marshall, welcome to Pray Vote Stand. Tony, I'm honored to be with you. What, what a day. God is alive. God is well. He's working in this nation right now. And just, I'm just so excited to talk to you and your listeners. I started off this morning uh, with a prayer group from Kansas that I meet with month, uh, monthly. It's great to be praying with you and your listeners. You described Monday night as earth shaking. And I'm just sitting here listening to your opening remarks. And what it reminded me of was Good Friday and Easter. You know, Good Friday, we, you know, Jesus gave his life up for us. But on Sunday, there was an earthquake and Jesus is risen. And that's what this reminded me of Monday night. And, and that there's this should be a day we should be, I, I think, celebrating, humbly celebrating. But we have a lot of other issues we've got to dive into. Well, Senator, you were one of the first that came to mind when we decided to do this special edition of Pray Vote Stand because I know how passionate you are for life and how even in the Senate, just a short period of time, you've established that record. Now, I know in the first 36 hours, uh, 48 hours after this, re this uh, document was uh, published, it was leaked, that the focus has been on the leak. And I understand that being an area of focus. But I want to go beyond that tonight to look at the actual substance of this draft opinion and what it means going forward. Now, uh, all that said, we know that it is a draft. It was written back in February. It could change. But many experts say probably not substantially. And that was probably why it was leaked, to try to intimidate justices to back away from this position. But what does this opinion, as we know right now, what does this say to us as a nation? Yeah. Uh, well, Tony, first of all, it was an egregious attack 
on the institution of the Supreme Court. And it's too bad that the national media wants to go right beyond beyond that and start talking their their talking points and politicize this. But but really the, the Dobbs case, the Mississippi case, is about returning the decision back to local courts, to state officials who were elected by the people. And I think as, as you start cite, citing the Supreme Court justices rough draft, that's exactly what he's saying is let's uh Mississippi should be able to decide what they think is right and wrong. Kansas should be able to, uh, should let's put it back in the hand of legislators uh, rather than nine Supreme Court justices. Well, that is exactly what this does. When you've seen the reaction of the left, they have pro pro led people, they're leading people to believe that the court is imposing something on the nation which is the exact opposite of what the court did 50 years ago. As you just described, this goes back to the people through their elected representatives to determine what the policies will be in their respective states. Yeah, Tony, I think it's just that simple. And the press is going to really try to make this next election all about this issue. And they're going to tell the American people that this is the end of all abortions. Now, you and I believe conception begins at life. I will fight to protect life on the land, on the air, in the sea, wherever we can. But this is certainly a step in the right direction. And Tony, if you'll just forgive me, I want us to stop a moment and think about to those, those uh, long days of summer when you and, and your listeners, Family Research Council, was fighting to help shepherd a couple of Supreme Court justices across the finish line. Think back to when President Trump was a candidate and leaders like yourself approached his, his, uh, his, his folks running his campaign and saying, where are you on life? Will you commit to only uh, submitting Supreme Court justices that believe in life? And God gave him three opportunities to do that. He came through. Uh, they were passed via a miracle. And, and we just got to all stop and celebrate the answered prayer. Uh, when people asked me two years ago, will Roe versus Wade ever end? Roe versus Wade is dead. It's gone. More babies are going to survive and, and live. So thank you. And thank you for all your listeners who back there in the dog days of summers were doing the Lord's work. Uh, Senator Marshall, it is more than appropriate to recognize that because this path, this 50 year path to this point, we've gotten here because of people who have prayed We've gotten here because of pastors who have preached and teach the Word of God as it pertains to the sanctity of human life. We've gotten here because of men and women who have sacrificially given and volunteered at care pregnancy centers across this nation, bringing a recognition of the humanity of the unborn. And we've gotten here because of men and women who have engaged in the political process, whether it's to become candidates, uh, whether it's become elected leaders like yourself who have taken strong stands for life in that arena, or it's been volunteers in our campaigns that have put up yard signs or made phone calls or licked envelopes. Uh, it has been a team effort that has gotten us. But most of all, we give thanks to God for being merciful to us as a nation and allowing us to come to this point. Yeah, yeah, Tony, that's the story of the Old Testament, the people of Israel drifting away from God, stopping, confessing our sins and saying, God, we know you didn't leave us. We left you. And, and again, just all these memories going back uh, to President Trump when, during his election process and the people I had no, no idea were even politically involved would come up to me, these little old ladies from my church and say, you stand behind President Trump. We don't know what God in, has in store for him, but God is going to use President Trump for something really special. And I really think that these were the moments that those folks were prophesizing to me about. And again, to your point, people prayed, they voted. They talked, they voted with their feet, and then we stood up for life the whole yeah. way. We've never flinched, and, and God is rewarding the fruits of those efforts. Without question. Senator, I, I want to thank you for joining us tonight, and I, I want to ask you if you would, if we close our time uh, with you, and if you'll close us in prayer, praying for the court, but also praying for uh, those elected leaders across America who will now have to take up this issue and advance the sanctity of human life even further. Yeah, well, Tony, I'm honored uh, to always to pray and appreciate, appreciate you and your listeners. And if you'll just go to the Lord with me in prayer, everybody, God, I just give you all the glory and honor 
uh, for our Supreme Court justices having the courage to stand up and to right the wrong, to fight for what we know is right, for standing up for our Constitution and fighting for life. God, I pray you would keep those Supreme Court justices and their families safe. They are literally physically um, being threatened as we speak. Uh, there are protesters at their homes. Uh, God, just don't give the evil one a chance. Um, again, we just ask for your blessings on this country. I'm so grateful for, for Tony and Family Research Council. and Just give them guidance uh, as, as they help shape America's uh, next steps. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Senator. Always great to be with you. Thank you, Tony. The potential ruling of the Supreme Court is not in itself the only shockwave here in Washington this week. To have a draft of a majority opinion leaked to the press prior to the ruling violates every norm cherished in the history of the modern Supreme Court. Already, Chief Justice John Roberts has ordered an investigation by the marshal of the Supreme Court to determine where the leak may have been. And we're sure to hear more about this in the coming days. but. Back to the potential ruling itself. It's important to remember that even if something resembling the draft of the majority opinion goes on to become the final decision, this will not only represent a overturning of Roe v. Wade, but this is empowering the people to determine their future as it pertains to one of the most important issues that is facing America. With me now to talk more about this is uh, someone who knows a little bit about the court. Carrie Severino has uh, served as a law clerk in the U.S. Supreme Court to Court Justice Clarence Thomas, and she is now the Chief Counsel and Policy Director of Judicial Crisis Network. Carrie, welcome back to Pray, Vote, Stand. Uh, thanks, Jenny. Now, we, we've had so much uh, to react to since this no news broke uh, Monday evening. First, it was all about the leak and where did this come from, and, and that's important. Uh, but as you have communicated, it's really the substance of this draft that should be our focus. And I want to get to that. But first, with your experience working in the Supreme Court, how unprecedented of a breach of security by leaking this document, how significant was this? And yeah, you know, especially for a lot of people like us around D.C., leaks become kind of, it's, it's a t popular technique. It happens all the time. So you kind of brush over the fact that this happened. But at the Supreme Court, that is not the way things go. It is highly uh, close the way they hold things. I would never have been allowed to leave the building with a piece of paper like that in front of, of internal documents. I had to be careful, I, you know, work long hours to get all my work done at the office because you couldn't leave the building with it. The idea that something would be leaked is just like this, a whole draft opinion, unheard of, has never happened in American history. Someone was telling the story of how Justice Scalia uh, prepared his clerks as they started. He said, they, he, he would tell them, I want to, only want to say this once, but if I ever discover that you betray the confidences of what goes on in these chambers, I will do everything in my power to ruin your career. And that was just to give them a warning, like, this is serious. It is, it, it's really shocking. It's a betrayal of trust. And as you alluded to earlier, it, it creates real even, even uh, safety risks for the justices themselves, because people can think, hey, the only way to stop this opinion is to, um, is to attack one of the justices themselves. And so, uh, so I, I think this is a really an indication of the direction our society has gone, where it used to be that the whole legal community would have supported that and said, hey, regardless of your position, we're never going to respect this person the same way if they do this. And so it keeps people in line. I don't think that's the case, unfortunately, anymore. And some people think that the end of promoting abortion and protecting abortion uh, in Roe versus Wade uh, justifies any means whatsoever. And that's really frightening. Yeah, it kind of reminds me, we're in our two-year Bible reading plan. We're in the book of Judges. And the very last verse of the book of Judges talks about how every man did what was right in his own eyes. And I think that's where we are really in America, where people justify uh, the, the, the means based upon the end of their wanting to accomplish, in this case, to protect uh, abortion. How many people would have access uh, to this draft opinion? 
you know, it would have been the justices. That's nine people right there. Each justice has four clerks who would have probably had a copy of it. Obviously, it had to go through the chambers at some point. So presumably, you know, an administrative assistant would have seen it. But I just think the the overwhelming likelihood, and I think this is the what most people are operating on the assumption on both sides of the aisle, is that this is this is probably a, a clerk to one of the liberal justices would have done this in the misguided hope to say, hey, it's kind of a desperation, you know, Hail Mary pass kind of thing of like, hey, this thing is going to happen. Uh, traditionally, by the end of April, they would have let the ju chief justice know if they were going to change their vote. So this thing may have already been pretty much locked down and saying, hey, this is the only way we could change it is to institute this, um, the protests and some of the hostility and the intimidation that we're now unfortunately starting to see. And so they thought maybe leaking that would be their only last ditch effort. I would think it would not be hard to find the source of that leak because we're not talking about hundreds of people. We're just talking about uh, just dozens of people that right. would have access to this. Of course, as you as you alluded to, uh, this individual will probably be celebrated, probably get, be given a professorship at some liberal institution or a spot on MSNBC. But uh, I, I don't want us to get too distracted on that, as important as it is in preserving, and you're absolutely right to point that out because it, it is a sad commentary on where we have come, especially as we've held the court to be kind of above politics, but we're seeing that so is not the case uh, as much anymore. But let's move now to the substance of this draft opinion. Again, I underscore it is a draft. It, it could change. Um, but is it your sense that it would change substantially? Or are we looking at pretty much what could be the final opinion of the court? Well, it's a little challenging because the draft is dated February. So it's actually theoretically possible there were edits made that we don't have um, in the meantime. I would say, um, it, you know, what I would adv advise the court to do is just let's release this draft as it is. It's, you know, it, the, it, inside the court, there are always edits going back and forth. People could ask for things to be changed before signing on um, of those five that, that were voting for it. Um, I would think the smart thing would be to say, hey, you know what? Even though I'm sure there's things you could nitpick, you, you, you go back and forth on at this point, it would make most sense to me to say, let's let's put this opinion out there. Let's stop this uh, national debate that's now happening and the opening the door to pressure on the court and just move forward. So I'd hope they go through with the, with the draft substantially as it is. And I think it certainly seems like it's ready. It, it could be ready to be published as written and as leaked. Now, we, we, we know how significant of a moment this is based upon the way the left is reacting and, frankly, overstating what the court is doing here. Because we, we, we're hearing about, you know, and these are elected leaders. These are smart people who are basically saying the court is imposing on the nation uh, you know, these restrictions, which is absolutely not true. I mean, this is actually returning it to where we were 50 years ago, giving this back to the people through their elected representatives, is it not? Yeah, I heard some, there's been some bizarre things, Ted. I mean, I heard a quote from President Biden where it sounded like he thought that this was going to be outlawing abortion across the country. Unfortunately, that's not actually what it means. What it means is the American people get the right to decide. In some states, uh, that may mean that they're going to be very protective of life. Unfortunately, a lot of states are not. And um, and so it's going to it's going to really put it back in the hands of the people. It's why there's another statement that gets thrown around that I think is also crazy. People calling it undemocratic, uh, saying that, well, judges shouldn't be making this decision. Folks, Judges made the Roe versus Wade decision. That was a decision that struck down democratically passed laws across the nation. So if there's anything that's pro-democratic, and, and Justice Alito makes this point in his, in his uh, draft there, it's handing it back to the people. If you want a regime where abortion is legal all nine months, uh, in, in our system, you can get that regime. If you want a regime that protects women and their unborn children, you can have that regime. So now actually the debate goes back to the state. So this this decision, if it's published as written, doesn't mean pro-lifers job is over. In fact, in many ways, it's just beginning. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's so important to underscore because I, I think I don't mean to be critical, but I think there are some in the movement that just want the work to be done for them. And, and frankly, anything worth having is worth working for. And I know many like yourself and others have worked for years to get us to this point. But as it goes back to the state, it means that we just have to redouble our efforts. In fact, we've made tremendous progress in the last decade in terms of where states have come to this issue. I mean, we will automatically have about 22 states that have trigger mechanisms in place that make uh, abortion illegal in their states. And I think we go to work in the others 
uh, to advance it even further. So this is a, it's a great opportunity for those who care about the sanctity of life when this decision comes forward. Carrie, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind closing our time together in, in prayer and knowing the pressures there at the court, if you wouldn't mind just praying for those on the court in these, uh, for, for their safety, as, as we've talked about, for their families, and, and, and for the, the peace just to surround them as they move forward in releasing this opinion. Sure. Let's pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are the God of justice. You are the God of truth. You are our heavenly King, our consoler, the spirit of truth present in all places and filling all things. We ask that you would fill the members of the court uh, this day with um, your peace, keep them safe in your hand, give them the courage to do what is right, uh, help those who are having trouble seeing that to uh, be converted, to understand the importance of, of truth, of justice, of your truth. We thank you for this country that gives us the, all of our freedoms, and we pray that, that you would give us the ability, since we have um, a voice in our government, to make that a voice uh, for justice and, and to bring about a country that would honor you. We ask all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Carrie Severino, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thanks. As we've noted already on the program, what we've seen so far is only a draft of the majority opinion. Its leak, as we have uh, stated, was most likely meant to pressure the Supreme Court justices to back away, somehow making them think that uh, this was going to be explosive and that the nation could not handle it. Well, there's going to be opposition. We've already seen it. But as I mentioned before, this underscores not the political or the policy nature of abortion, but the spiritual side of things and the warfare uh, that we've seen, not just this week, but I can tell you going back to my beginning in the pro-life movement back in 1992, that I've always seen the spiritual side of this battle in, think about it for a moment. I mean, think about this. We're at a point of nearly a half a century where this nation has embraced abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy. And you even have states right now saying we should take it beyond birth. And we're at a point where we are changing our mind or repenting, if you will, for the policy that has dominated this country. So should we be surprised that there is spiritual warfare swirling around this issue? I think not. Joining me now to uh, talk about this and to close our time out in prayer is Pastor Jay Johnston. He's FRC's National Prayer Director, and he's here to share some of the ways that we can each make a difference as we pray in the hours and days ahead. Uh, Jay, welcome back to Pray, Vote, Stand. Thanks, Tony. Now, you were actually up at the Supreme Court Monday night uh, after this leaked uh, document was published. What was your sense, spiritually speaking, uh, from your exposure there at the Supreme Court? There was some of the celebration, but there was also, uh, there was a darkness that came because of some of the things that were taking place. There was just some evil that was coming on the grounds of the court. And so there was, I was grateful that there were others uh, that came alongside and began worshiping. And we know that uh, those worshipers go out in front. And so there was that sense taking place. And so it, it was one of those that was like, thank you, Lord, for this happening. But we know we're not at the, the finish line. So is it your experience, uh, Dr. Johnston, that uh, Satan doesn't give up territory easily? No. No, he does not. I mean, he's not going to wave a white flag and walk away. No, he, does. He, he will not walk away. This morning, 
as I was praying before the, the dawn hours, walking around the court. Uh, just the, what was impressed upon me was we need to persevere. We need to keep pushing in as followers of Christ and recognizing that this is life. And even yesterday afternoon, that all that was going on where thousands were being bussed in, the, the, that old hymn we would sing of rescue the perish and care for the dying was just so impressed upon my heart. I was weeping because realizing that these are people that need Jesus, just like I need Jesus. This moment, as I alluded to a few moments ago, 50 years, 49 years, almost 50 years, yeah. this has been imposed upon the nation. It wasn't voted on by a legislative body. It wasn't selected by the people. It was imposed by the court. Now, it, uh, if this opinion holds, it goes back to the people through their elected representatives. And, and again, I think we get the choice that Moses gave the children of Israel, choose life. We have, a, we have a choice. We can make that choice. How significant of a moment is this spiritually for our country? Well, I think it is, it's monumental. It's, it's that place where we either choose to repent or we, we face that, that judgment of the Lord. Well, you said, talk about repentance. We've, I mean, I, I'm sure you have been. I've been in many prayer meetings where we've repented for abortion. But repentance, remorse is being, you know, feeling bad for what you did. Yes. Repentance is actually changing. Changing. And it, that's what the court would do here. Yes. The court, in this opinion, is changing its mind and changing its way on abortion. This is that repentance that we've been praying for. That's correct. It, 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 is, it is truly making that, that change that turns and, and really turns people that the people in their states can then choose. And, and at that point, you know, what those states do is up to them. But it is at this point for the courts, which we've prayed for, we've prayed for the court to change, to, to ch see this um, moving and changing direction that it takes it back to the people. I mean, and to be clear, our work is not over. It's no. just beginning, whether it's expanding the care pregnancy uh, clinic network, whether it's churches that are coming alongside uh, those ministries and creating other ministries, uh, more people running for office to pass those laws at right. the local level uh, to pray. I mean, it, it, the work is just beginning. But for where we are right now, as we close out tonight's uh, program, I just first I want to ask you to to give people, uh, our viewers, a few prayer points how they can be praying in the next uh, few days, however long it takes for this opinion to be released, and of course beyond that, and then I'd like you to close us in prayer. Sure. Tonight. Well, to begin with, we do need to continue to pray for the justices. We need to pray for them to be strong and courageous. Uh, we can take counsel from Moses, where he said to be strong and courageous. We need to be praying that for the justices. We need to be praying for their safety and protection, the safety and protection of their families, that no harm would come to them. Likewise, for the clerks, we need to continue to pray for them and for every staff member that is a part of the, associated with the Supreme Court. We need to be praying for those moms out there that even today are, are contemplating whether they're going to keep their child or walk into an abortion clinic. We need to be praying for the, the fathers who fathered those children. We need to pray that they, that they stand up, that they, that they have courage to be the, the, the father to that child and to raise them up. And so we have that. The also, I think we are, we're in a moment here in the United States for the church. I think we're really at this place where the church needs to take a stand and begin being involved in their community, speaking up and speaking out for life. And for all of those ministries out there, many of them like the crisis pregnancy centers who have been so faithful to help and, and counsel and support, uh, we need to continue to embrace them and support them and, and most of all, we need to love one another. That's what God's commanded us to do. We need to love each other. 
whether they're on one side or the other, we need to show the love of Christ to them. That's right. Well, close us sure. with that Let's prayer, pray. Dr. J. Well, Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. Lord, that we're at this moment in history here in the United States of America. God, we do come before you and we pray, Lord, today for the justices. We do pray for their safety and for their protection. We pray for their families, Lord, that no harm would come to them. And Lord, we lift up the clerks. God, as they continue to do the work that they've been assigned to do, that they committed to, Lord, even in the midst of this this breach that has taken place, Lord, we pray, God, that you would move upon their hearts. And Father, we come before you praying today, too, for moms and dads, for those moms that may be contemplating the abortion of their, their child today. Father, I just pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would just woo them to you and just put upon their hearts that they can, can move forth and that they can raise their son or daughter up. Father, I pray for those men who, who would take responsibility, who, are, who have fathered this child, that God, that they would no longer be absent and that they would stand with that, that mom and Lord that say, hey, we're going to work through this together. And then, Lord, I want to just pray for churches and for ministries that are followers of Christ, that today, God, would you just raise them up to be bold and mighty for you? Father, would you just put upon their hearts? Father, many of these churches that have been silent for far too long, I just pray that you would just bring conviction to the pastors of those churches that they would just say no more, and we're going to be in this to to love and to nurture and to provide and to support. And so we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here in our midst. Lord, we pray your blessings upon each one that's listening tonight. Father, just put it up on their hearts to continue to be out there active and involved in, in, in this fight for life. Lord, because that's what it is. Lord, we're far from the finish line as this moves into the states. Father, may we stand And just, Lord, claim that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of all of life, and that, Lord, we're going to trust you in this season. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. J., thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for praying out there at the uh, the court. And, folks, I want to thank you for being with us as well. And I want to encourage you to continue to pray as we await the final opinion of the court. Uh, As always, pray, vote when you have the opportunity, and stand for the truth no matter what.